the Great Dismal Swamp currently covers uh, the area of uh, North Carolina and the Virginia border. The swamp used to be much, much bigger. Um, around the time period that we're going to be discussing or uh, doing our lesson tonight, the swamp was about a million acres. It's currently only um, a little over 100,000. Um, but it went all the way down into South Carolina as well uh, at, a, at a certain point in time. So in the swamp, originally uh, a lot of native tribes lived there. I'm not going to go into um, great detail on that. Sierra's going to talk about that. I'm just giving you guys an overview. But there were Native American tribes that, you know, lived in the swamp. Um, they operated uh, out of the swamp and they were there when the settlers came in, you know, the... <clears throat> the colonists when the colonists came in these native people had already been inhabiting in these swamps um in 1607 when the town of jamestown virginia is established that's when you see africans actually start to come in and inhabit the swamp as well in 1732 a man by the name of william bird ii went into the swamps to survey the land um, before that time there were legends and you know rumors and stories about you know these wild people that lived in these swamps and you can you know smell food being cooked and you can hear people you know uh making noise and stuff you can hear them living in there um so this man william bird actually went out into the swamp to go and see what was up they did not know what to do when they saw you know all of this land and you know there's thousands upon thousands of people living there today it's estimated that 50,000 people lived in the swamp from the 1600s into the 1800s but we know that number is much much higher that's what they knew about so they decided to they there we're going to talk about this in greater detail as well but they decided to drain the swamp and that's when people started to leave the swamp and go out into other areas. I also wanted to talk about really quick the history of uh, where the word maroon comes from. It depends on the source. Uh, some people will say that it comes from the French word marounage, which means to flee or to be freed. But it actually comes from the Spanish word cimerones, which refers to uh, wild livestock um, that escapes. Usually they're wild and defiant. And today we know that the Maroons are the descendants of Africans and the Americans who formed settlements away from slavery. When the English settlers came into Virginia and everyone knows that lie that Disney put out about the story of Pocahontas or even the newer movies that HBO has done, it's never 100% correct and they never tell the full story. The English settlers, they fought, there was actually a war that went on between Pocahontas' father, Chief Powhatan, who was a real king, not just some chief, he was a king. This man was a king of Virginia. He, he, this man was a king of a, of a lot of land. They fought the English settlers for almost 30 years, four distinct battles, four very distinct battles, that they fought over land to avoid losing so many people the algonquin people they made a treaty with them okay you're gonna take this portion of the land and we're gonna take this portion of the land well what was so messed up about this was of course the english settlers tricked them and they took land that was directly in the middle of part of Chief Powhatan's kingdom. And when they did this, it isolated the Algonquin people who lived towards the south, who lived towards the swamps. They did not want that land because it was full of alligators and snakes. And it was just, it was a very, it's a very harsh environment. It is not like the Everglades or even the swamps down in Louisiana. It is a very thick, dense brush and underbrush. Like you barely can even walk through it. A very dangerous place to be, even still to this day. So the land that they took separated the Algonquin people. And those who were in the south, they were isolated towards the swamps. And that's where they lived. That's where they grew their culture. When 
the 1630s happened and you start, I'm sorry, the 1630s to the 1650s, they started shipping in more Africans directly into Jamestown by the hundreds. And this is where we start to see the Africans actually starting to break off and run into the swamps. But to give a brief history on that as well, during this time, in the 1600s, slavery was not institutionalized as it was later in the 17th and 18th century. It was still very much in Virginia, a form of indentured servitude. There were Africans who were able to buy their freedom after a certain time. It, they made a law in the 1600s that once they found out about tobacco in the and slavery became industrial industrialized in Virginia, it became a law that any black person, any black person in Virginia could not be free. They had to be enslaved. So people who might have already had bought their freedom, they were rounded up and put in back into slavery. Some of them also ran into the swamps as well. I just want everyone for a moment to really think about the area that is the Great Dismal Swamp and to really consider the thousands upon thousands of families that lived here and created a community. Um, I also want everyone to keep in mind that while, you know, the Great Dismal Swamp is legendary, you know, for the maroonage that took place there, all of these Africans coming in, you know, refusing to live life in bondage, that the Native Americans really did set the groundwork for where they would live. Um, they had already established homes there. They had already, you know, cut down trees to make trails. They traded with the Africans. They showed them where to go, how to get in and out because they lived really, really deep inside the swamp, right? So they showed them different ways to get to where the community was. And it's just not like a bunch of quote unquote, as they were referred to wild people living in a swamp, right? We have communities. They had bartering systems. Um, even later on, they would trade service for service with actually enslaved Africans who were sent to work in, in the Dismal Swamp as well. So it's we're talking about a very extremely sophisticated community that could not have existed in the way that it was if the natives had not shown them the way. To tie this in to hoodoo, speaking from my experience and just from some of the stories that my family has told me and just from folklore growing up in Virginia, there was not this tension between the natives and the black man. I'm speaking about Virginia. Never, I'm not gonna say never, but I've never heard of anyone to me speaking of tension between the natives and the black man. That's how they were, the, the natives referred to the Africans. They called them the black man. And you have to understand that they did not fight with these people when they came into their lands. They traded with them, they took them in, they exchanged so much with them. The black man was useful to the natives. You see, these natives also, while they had been living in the swamp, they had not been there for that long. They were isolated to this land. And when the black man showed up, what was us now trying to survive, we have now assimilated to two different cultures, cultures, excuse me, combined them, and now we thrive. The natives taught the black man how to build huts in the ground and raise them up because the, the land was marshy. The black man showed the Indians how to cultivate certain different things on that marshy land because they were used to it in Africa and how to farm better. The natives showed the black man where the wildlife was and where you could hunt in these lands. Hey, are you enjoying the show? 
If so, don't forget to follow Hoodoo and Chill on Apple and Spotify and leave us a five-star rating. Would you like to attend an uncut, unedited, live taping of Hoodoo and Chill podcast? Then don't forget to follow Hoodoo Conjure Root Work on the Clubhouse app and tune in live Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Also, if you like the content and want to help our ministry grow, please support us by sending a donation of love. The link is in the podcast description. Now, back to the show.